Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So do check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're going to investigate how to use eViews to estimate a multiple linear regression. Find key outputs and interpret them using the eViews provided templates. We'll move on to more sophisticated eViews applications in further videos if there are enough likes on this video and there is enough interest in the topic overall. So without further ado, how to run a regression using eViews. So let me expand the window. Uh, let me locate the quick option at the uh, top left menu and select estimate equation. So as I press estimate equation, an equation estimation menu would appear. And here I would be able to uh, code my um, regression equation. So we start with the name of our dependent variable, which is Tesla. Then we separate uh, our variable names with spaces. So um, eViews recognizes um, the separate variables. Uh, if we want the constant, we need to input C. Again, by default, C is the constant term in eViews. You can see it uh, in the uh, work file specification here. Uh, again, uh, unless you uh, explicitly say that um, constant should be uh, treated as something else, C would be the constant term. And then we follow it up with the names of our independent variables separated with spaces. So S&P 500 and oil. Uh, and again, uh, there is another way of doing it. If we just press O, it will open a drop-down menu and you'll be able to select the relevant variable from a drop-down menu. That works best when your variable names are quite long or there are a lot of them. And now we press OK and it allows us to estimate our multiple linear regression on the full sample. What we'll see immediately is that we have got our dependent variable on the top, we have got our constant and our uh, coefficients for independent variables presented. The coefficients are reported in the uh, first column of our table. We can see that our uh, intercept or our alpha is 0 0.03, so three basis points per day. Our market beta S&P 500 um, coefficient is 1.23, and our oil coefficient is approximately 0 0.05. The standard errors for these coefficients are represented uh, further to the right-hand side, so just uh, in the neighboring column. Uh, and we can also calculate the t statistics, and the p-values are presented in the probability column at the very right. And here we can see that um, the default hypothesis testing, which is are those coefficients statistically different from zero, has already been executed by default, which is quite nice. Uh, we can see that the constant, so the alpha, is insignificant. Our p-value is quite high, higher than 10%. And the t-stat is pretty low in terms of its magnitude. The S&P 500 coefficient is overwhelmingly significant, so again, it means that it's substantially different from zero, isn't it? That Tesla does respond uh, substantially to market risk, which is unsurprising perhaps, and the oil coefficient is positive, although it's insignificant. Only marginally so. This p-value is close to 10%, although it exceeds it, so we have to uh, denote this coefficient as insignificant. Other important outputs that the EV's regression template provides are the R squared and the adjusted R squared. So this is our R squared is around 0.15. 15% of the variability of daily Tesla returns are explained by S&P 500 and uh, the crude oil returns. What is also important is that the test, the significance of the model is undertaken uh, automatically here. We have got the F statistic for the full model and the probability of the F statistic, so the p-value. So this model has um, statistically significant explanatory power, as this p-value is very low, below 1%. We can see uh, the standard error of the regression, so that's the standard error uh, of our fitted value, 2.62, meaning that uh, on average, Tesla returns are 2.62% away from the value predicted by this model. We can also uh, refer to the Durbin-Watson statistic, which is uh, a topic for autocorrelation testing that we'll touch upon in one of the future videos. And we can see uh, several information criteria that can be helpful in model selection if we want to choose one of the different models. However, that is also quite a bit more advanced and uh, involves uh, selecting models with a different number of lags and stuff like that. 
in terms of the baseline interpretation, uh, what we want to um, have a closer look at are most likely the coefficients, the p-values, so the probabilities at the very rightmost column, the r-squared for the interpretation of um, explanatory power of the model, alongside the uh, f-test for the uh, significance of the model overall, the joint significance of all independent variables. And that's how you create a multiple regression um, model in eViews. However, what happens if you need to store it? Well, if you close it, it will prompt you to either delete it or name it. So let's name it as OLS1. And that would store this equation um, indefinitely uh, and we'll be able to refer back to it without having to estimate it again, which is quite handy. And obviously, don't forget to save your eViews files after you uh, stopped working with the software. And that's the basics uh, of eViews in terms of importing data into it and estimating multiple regression. In future videos, we'll investigate some diagnostic tests, such as autocorrelation and head risk elasticity, and play around with some of the more advanced uh, tools that eViews has to offer. As for now, please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos you would like me to record, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supports on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.